All right, hello everyone. I'm here with Simon Vorster, and we're gonna do a little interview. Simon will be giving a talk at the upcoming EA conference, October 6th till October 8th here in the US. So this will be an opportunity to get to know Simon as an EA teacher, what he's up to, his history with EA, what he's really interested in, what he's learning, and we'll also get to speak to the topic that he'll be teaching on during this conference. First question I wanna ask you, is what is your story with EA? How did you get into EA? What drew you to it? How did you find it? So this happened in 2011, uh, early January 2011. Uh, I came across actually Kim Marie's uh, video on the Scorpio archetype. And already at that point, I was starting to be starting to to want to take my astrological interests and, and make it more professional. So I was very, very early at that stage. And I came across this this teaching and she was talking about Jeffrey Wolf Green and uh, his work on evolutionary astrology. And I was like, whoa, what is this? And there's a very big part of me that wanted to get to a form of astrology that was beyond just descriptions. So this arrived into my life and I ordered a DVD that came through the post. But then um, I think it was like 10 months after that, that I didn't actually return to that. And um, I, I don't know how, but it, it came back on the radar. I think it was an email or something. And um, I went back into and I just dived into it. And um, so I found Pluto's books. So I got Pluto one and I started reading it with my partner, Jen. And we were just like, whoa, this is a whole different level of stuff here. And uh, from there, you any person that's coming to EA will know that there is there is a moment of merging or osmosis with something. And that was that moment. And then from there, we, we sort of did some in investigation and I found Jeffrey Wolf Green's uh, school. And I, I, I tell people the story quite often because it's something that's very dear to my heart. But at the time, uh, to, to purchase the school was a certain amount of money. I think it was like $1,000 or something. And I had, we, we had no money. And like three, three and a half weeks, four and a half weeks after seeing that you could enroll in a school and, and learn EA from Jeffrey of Green and his DVDs, a tax return came through for the exact amount of money that it was for. Nice. And that was just like a moment of, okay, this is, this is destined. So of course, as soon as I got the material, um, we just dove into it. And from there, it's just a process of, uh, yeah, just going through the EA journey, which, yeah. This is where we are today. This is actually what interests me most, what's exciting for me to ask and learn about. Yeah. At this time in your life, you've been studying this, you've been working and you have your own channel. You really put out beautiful quality teachings um, and you've been working with many people. I'm really drawn to know for you, mm -hmm. what at this time is the present moment edge of your own learning? Sure. Is it you're really starting to, because as you mentioned, this is one of those things where everyone who gets into it, we, we, the, the knowledge is us most. Yes. And it's something that deepens with our ongoing realization. And I think mm -hmm. if we're really authentically continuing to grow, we're always going to find ourselves getting to these thresholds of deepening in our insights and realizations. So what is that for you right now? What is currently exciting and, and engaging in your own edge of realization within this work? Um, three things. The so if you're if you're following a EA, you'll know these these terms. So the resolution of my squares to the nodes. I have both Mars and Venus in Virgo in the eighth house. They're exactly squaring my nodes. So firstly, the resolution of my nodes has become uh, something that EA has EA has been a vehicle for me to emotionally connect with to what that resolution looks like in myself. So and I'll explain it further what that means. Um, understanding my polarity point. So I have Pluto in the tenth. So the polarity point for me being in the fourth house has been a huge indicator as to how EA has evolved me and how that deeply, deeply influences my astrology and what I'm presenting, like how I'm coming into it. And the third thing is learning how to... So to me, EA is medicine. That, that's how I see it. That's how I experienced it. I experienced it as medicine. I experienced it as a process of coming into contact with something beyond just this surface plane level of, of personality types and descriptions that there's actually something 
going on beneath the surface. So we're kind of EA's paradigm is Pluto and its nodes. Yeah. So for me, coming into a deeper contact and understanding what that's about and exploring that and, and recognizing that to me right now, humanity is in a, in a place of deep emotional transformation. And I feel that EA is a vehicle to help people come into a deeper relationship with themselves and to help them understand a lot of what is occurring right now in the world to make sense of things. And the synthesis of those three things essentially is what kind of where I'm at right now. So for me, um, one of Jeffrey's teachings that has always stuck with me and I've consistently come back to reflect on it, what does it mean? What does it mean? Is evolving through the emotional body. And what, what does that mean? Like, how, how, how do you experience that? What's, what's, what does that actually do? How do you actually enact that? And currently right now, Pluto in the 10th, its evolution to come into the emotional body is a big deal for me. So what are the archetypes? What's the story that we live when we are connected to our senses, when we're connected to our emotions, when we're connected to what they're telling us? And so educating people through this lens and using EA as a vehicle is where I'm currently at right now. That inspires me uh, in many ways. Let's talk about the conference. Yeah. For everyone watching, we have 15 presenters. This is actually the first evolutionary astrology conference we've ever done online. I don't know if you know this, Simon, but we used to have in-person conferences. Mm -hmm. um, the most recent were in 2011 and 2012 in Portland, Oregon, in the USA. I was at both. And yeah. that's where I met a lot of the people that we both know. But I mean, the last time that a lot of us who will be at this conference were together was at this live retreat. So it's it's kind of cool. Um, many old timers who have been with Jeffrey from the beginning will be at this conference. What is your topic? What will you be talking about? And why is it significant? Absolutely. So I just want to quickly say that I actually have the DVD uh, folder for all of the teachings that happened oh, at that man. conference. And, and I remember you did one in the transiting nodes. And that was a that was, that was cool to watch. Um, that that's that it's beautiful to to see a return of EA and the teachings and and the commitment that both you and, and everybody else is putting together. It's an honor. And for me, that sets the stage actually for how I'm approaching this talk. So for me, I'm going to be uh, like talking or lecturing on Saturn's transit in Pisces. And uh, most importantly, the, the idea behind this lecture is to really convey uh, a few things. One that how can you as an individual uh, interpret this transit for yourself? So the aim will be to help people come into where this transit of Saturn is landing in their astrology charts and then how to orientate themselves towards it, giving some agency and some, some understanding. I feel that's good. And, and also teaching the fundamental principles of EA. So when looking at Saturn, uh, really explaining what it means to see Saturn as the defining reality, like the structure of reality and how it, how that correlates to that. And also how Saturn speaks to Tom and how the past and the future and the present kind of interface with each other and how this current transit of, of Saturn through Pisces is uh, impacting us individually and collectively. And um, something that I'm really excited to do as well, I love the planetary nodes. Um, I'm going to be introducing or bringing in how Saturn and its planetary nodes, so Saturn's planetary nodes sit in Capricorn, South Node, and its North Node in Cancer. So showing us how Saturn itself is actually evolving its own evolution through its south and north node and bringing that information to, to us as well. So very excited about that. Let's talk about this a little bit. Um, you know, I think Saturn and Pisces for many students often feels intangible. Uh -huh. um, yeah, conditioning, time, space with, with Pisces, the unconditioned. So how would you speak to the evolutionary intention of this archetype? What's happening when we put that planetary function which is all about conditioning in that which cannot ever be thought of in that way uh, the the way that i'm going to approach it and i'm still in a deep researching process is i'm going to uh, bring in jeffrey's conversation around how he would talk about consciousness and he would use the glass of water as a way to understand the glass of water is saturn and 
consciousness being Neptune. And so consciousness takes the form relative to the glass, right? And so it, it's it's very malleable and, and uh, it moves like that. So in this sense, also including Pluto's transit through Capricorn, we've had that since 2008. I think this is a huge uh, piece of the puzzle that informs the specific context of Saturn through Pisces. It's not just any Saturn through Pisces transit, that there's context here. And so if you think about Pluto's transit in Capricorn and what it's been doing for us as a collective, and then understanding, to me at least, that the context of this Saturn through Pisces, I know there's going to be some more information you have, but Neptune has also been there for a long time. Neptune's been in Pisces. So when I see these outer planetary transits moving through these signs, and then I see Saturn coming along, uh, to me, this is a huge culmination signature. Right? It speaks to a huge culmination signature. So what I see in reality is different civilizations, so the West, how the East will be dealing with this, different cultures coming into what I would say Saturn, right, time, a it's like everything has run its course. The structures that were defined before have reached a senescent point. They've come, they've, they've come to a point where they are now becoming outdated. They're feeling archaic. And so we as human beings have evolved since when these institutions in our societies and structures have been formed to hold consciousness, the collective consciousness. And I'll try and make it a bit more tangible. If you take an institution that houses a certain idea of truth, right? At some point, that institution has to be um, Aquarius. It has to be reinvented in terms of its ideas. Maybe there needs to be a conversation around how the ideas that were formed a long time ago have become outdated. So I see Saturn through Pisces, along with Pluto and, and Neptune, as a collective culmination of the way that we have as a plane as a civilization as an entire earth dimension understood ourselves from the past and that's coming into play right now for us and we're meeting our past and we're seeing oh gosh we have changed you know an ex a simple example would be a banking system saturn okay structure institution uh i think it was like two or three months ago uh there was a huge um issue where two banks or three banks had collapsed because money uh, was taken out too quickly and they didn't actually have the financial backing to be able to support the customers and what was really profound about that Saturn in Pisces right was that people say 50 years ago when they came to the bank they walked down to the bank and they would say okay I'm going to take out my money but today we have internet banking we have a far more rapid way of making choices and so by us making choices in such a rapid way, I mean, then interfacing with a structure that has not caught up with where we're at in terms of our current structure, we're met with the decay. We're met with where our institutions and our, and our structures no longer can support where we are at. And so there's that conflict between Saturn showing us that we no longer can evolve in these structures because they are becoming archaic. They're being revealed as them being senescent. They've run their course. And so we will watch the decay of this. And at the same time, my sense of it as well is, is that we will also come into what do we do now? How do we rebuild an entirely new set of structures that meets the current way that we see reality? And part of that, I think, especially with Saturn through, through Pisces, is we don't know. <laughs> we're, we're, we're still in that chaos moment of of culmination i think that when neptune and saturn enter aries which is when they actually have their conjunction we will start to reorientate towards something new you speak about the banks and yeah. um what the insight that arose is oh this is a totally um it's a sandcastle because what banks do is they loan money they don't have right right it's like they just invent sure you know and and it, it's it's based on the hopes or the premise that someone won't take out a whole bunch at once revealing the illusion so all of these structures that if you just really think of the a good looking sandcastle um i mean it's it looks great they got shiny windows and they wear suits and the whole the whole system itself is a really well-designed illusion uh, but it's still an illusion 
so it just the broad, broad awareness of that, how so much of the institutions and the structures that we've been living within, I can see how Saturn and Pisces, and I imagine as it completes its cycle with Neptune, will really just be dissolving. And, and that's hard, right? That's hard for, for so many of us that have been dependent upon these structures for our stability, um, but there there's no stability in truth in them. Yes, I love that because what you, you pointed out, which I feel could be what, what, uh, what I was saying could be summarized in a sentence really based on, on what you shared was that the entire collective is coming into a disillusionment, mm. sad reality, right? And we need to confront the parts of ourselves that we've had to buy into illusions and ideals and dreams. So the American dream is something that a lot of people are coming into disillusionment with. And many of it is healing because acknowledging things has acknowledging reality has allowed for there to be a reorientation to something that's more organic, something that's more real versus buying into something, buying into an idealization that supports a deeper process that has nothing to do with your interests. So then with the disillusion of all these structures, the question that arises, I think is really important that many people will also be asking, where is the security? Like, what do we, this is not Uranus, this is Saturn, right? So we're looking at yeah. conditioning, um, discipline, structure, something that grows through consistency long-term. Yeah. Do we replace it with, how do we, how do we move beyond what can feel sort of anarchistic at a certain point and actually yes. feel stable and grounded? I've contemplated this a lot and I've given a lot of thought to this process and my, my, my perception on this, my position on this is deeply influenced by, again, EA teachings, which is that there are always natural cycles. Mm. So for me, especially understanding the resolution of my nodes, I've realized that as much as I would love to jump ahead and do this thing and do that thing, if I haven't actually emotionally matured through the process, the capacity to actualize it is diminished a lot. Mm. And then I get thrown back at myself. So I feel like that is not available to us until Sat Pluto's in Aquarius finally, as in it's not retrograding back. I feel that that will only be available to us once Neptune and Saturn enters Aries, because by that time, we will also have a tremendous amount of integration from Chiron's transit in Aries, as in the Pluto Libra generation are deeply coming into the healing of their generational story. And that will create the necessary collective consciousness and orientation to begin addressing what Neptune in Pisces and Saturn in Pisces has essentially left us with. And I, I can have a very um, edgy uh, uh, outlook on this process. And I suppose maybe, yeah, I, I feel that it's, it's good for me to, to look at it through that lens of this is what I see is actually there versus what I would want it to be. And I feel that, yeah, and I, and I feel and see that there is there, right now, especially with this new moon that's just happened, right, where it's uh, Re Venus retrograde in Leo and it's squaring Uranus. And it's in a time where we also have Pluto retrograding into, to, back into Capricorn. It's been there for some time. I feel that for all of us, we are working through some deep Plutonian emotional dynamics and that right now we're actually in the final boss stage. We're like working through the deepest emotional security and establishment that we can find within ourselves. Because to me, Saturn transiting through Pisces and what will leave us with is the need to heal ourselves. Because once we have addressed the deeper parts of ourselves that have been fragmented relative to the previous cycle, we won't be able to know how to navigate ourselves going forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there is a line that I read in the EA forum, 2012-2013, uh, that really struck with me, and it and it's really really deep within me in, in some way. I, I don't understand why, but I I understand it better now, which is that it was said that when Pluto enters Aquarius, half the half the the culture will ex will be working through their trauma, and other and half the people will essentially understand the Aquarius signature as in like being able to act like individuate through it. Mm. And it's always stuck with me, you know, what, how does this work? And now I've come to, I feel fully understand what that means, which is that Saturn and Pisces will reveal the parts of ourselves that we're in denial with, emotion at the soul level. And it will also reveal where those addictions are and what caused them. 
So if we're conscious of that process and we're allowing ourselves the Neptunian healing balm, we can reintegrate psychic drift, the parts of ourselves that have been like broken apart because of patriarchal consciousness or trauma in our lives or suppression of X, Y, Z. So to me, I feel there, there is a binary with Saturn. It can displace us completely and overwhelm us and we can just isolate and go back into more of that dream state. But for those that are conscious of this process and are doing that work, they can really come into some holistic healing within themselves, setting the stage for being able to move forward with Pluto and Aquarius. I really appreciate that. And one wisdom that I'm hearing from your answer is just the respect of the process. Yes. That you're speaking strongly to this uh, recognition of whether well, there are cycles here and really things really won't start to truly change because you can't separate Pluto and Capricorn from Saturn and Pisces until we had this ingress um, subtly, which is like a good year or two from now. And that in that process, there's a wisdom um, in really meeting the teachings and yes. the process of disillusionment and maybe even reorienting our attention to a more valuable internal spiritual orientation, um, seeking to understand and know what's truly meaningful, what's truly valuable what we can commit to right now, what is worth our time and our attention with the recognition that there's more to happen, like that, that new cycle, which I really see too, it's that, that Saturn, Neptune, new phase in Aries, it's clear as day. That's a very yeah. strong signature for movement. <laughs> and we're, yeah. not, we're not there yet. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I love that. That was, that was really well put. And I think uh, two things I want to acknowledge. One was I really love the language you used around describing the process and the wisdom in knowing that we're moving towards something and that as we move towards it, we still have to do this process. Yeah, but it leads us to that. So both having the awareness that we're moving to something that is going to be healthy and, and, and sort of integrated for us, but also noticing that we're not there yet. So coming into that. I really love how you described it in, in your own words. It was uh, illuminating. And I, um, yeah, that's exactly what I mean by that. Yeah. Cool. And this is the first time that we actually chatted together about astrology. So this is fun. Uh -huh. um, thank you, Simon, for um, joining me and for everyone to just have the opportunity to get to know you a bit for those that don't already know you. Once again, everyone, I welcome you to join us at the conference. Check it out in the description below. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you soon.